Hey, this is Karen Rivera from Pixelitis, and I'm with Darren Korb, audio director for Supergiant Games. Um, you might know them from their awesome hit game, Bastion, and their upcoming Transistor. All right, so thank you so much for doing this interview. Not a problem. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started with Supergiant Games and uh, composing video game soundtracks? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I basically just lucked into it. Uh, it's sort of the most honest answer I can give. My buddy Amir Rao is one of the co-founders of Supergiant Games, and we've been uh, buddies since we were about eight years old. We went to elementary school together, we played in a bunch of bands growing up, he was my drummer for a number of years. And uh, he, when he was starting the company with some friends, he asked me to do all the audio and music, just sort of a leap of faith, because he believed that I could do it, basically. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and I mean, one of the biggest things that I noticed playing through Bastion is that it has music that's really different from a lot of other games. Um, I remember hearing the description as uh, acoustic frontier trip hop. What was the process behind the uh, the creation of the music? And can you talk a little bit about the themes or the inspirations behind it? Yeah, uh, I wanted to, when I set out to make the music, one of my goals was to try and make something that I hadn't really heard in a game. Uh, you know, I, play, I played games my whole life growing up and everything, and I'm very familiar with a lot of game music. Um, and one of the main things I wanted to try and do was to like break out of the tropes that I was familiar with in game music. I, I had heard a lot of like kind of orchestral sweeping stuff. I'd heard like kind of rock, like hard rock kind of stuff, and then I'd heard like sort of chip tuney sort of stuff, um, and electronic stuff, and. And I, I wanted to do something that wasn't one any one of those things and one, wasn't necessarily a combination of all those things either. Um, so I tried to do something sort of that I hadn't really heard uh, in a game before. And then further kind of targeted that goal when I when we started coming up with what the tone of Bastion was going to be and, and how we wanted that to, to feel and everything. Gotcha. Um, I mean, one of the biggest things that I've seen is uh, kind of this explosion of indie games in general. And I just wanted to ask you, what do you think about the current trends revolving around indie games and people's attention to games that Journey, games like Journey, and not to mention, you know, Bastion has won a swath of awards and Transistor also took away a bunch of uh, awards at E3 for starters, you know. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's incredible to see smaller games getting recognized um, kind of right alongside uh, AAA titles is pretty, pretty incredible, and I think it's a uh, encouraging, you know, encouraging time to to be developing indie games for sure. Um, what do you think about Kickstarter's role in um, in indie games? It's been really cool to see uh, a lot of games that sound like games I want to play, you know, be funded on Kickstarter. I mean, I just finished playing Shadowrun, which is like the first Kickstarter thing that you know I want was interested in, and then it came out, you know, so. This is the first one I've actually been able to play through, and it was like super fun, and I really enjoyed enjoy myself. So I mean, you know, to think maybe that game wouldn't have gotten made that way, you know, if Kickstarter, if it weren't for Kickstarter. So it's it's I think it's very cool to see see you know games that maybe wouldn't get funded that are sort of more niche or something. Mm -hmm. So that's that's excellent. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely yeah. nice to see a wide variety of things that are being made as a result of Kickstarter. Absolutely. Um, now, going back to Bastion, uh, the game made a pretty big splash back in 2011 in the indie game community, and Transistor is, you know, I would assume following its steps, it looks like. What do you think Supergiant has contributed to the indie game community? You guys are one of the big kind of rising stars. Of uh, well, thank you for that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's hard to like believe any of that stuff um, to some degree. I mean, it's. I mean, we we've, we've been thrilled with the response Bastion has gotten, and it's kind of unbelievable um, to me that that people have responded so well to the game and to the soundtrack and all that stuff. And and um, and seeing the excitement for Transistor is really sort of mind-blowing and, and uh, very encouraging and uh, you know hopefully people will like it but uh, as far as I'm sorry what, what was the what was the actual question part of the question sure so <laughs> what do you think Supergiant specifically has contributed to the community uh, I mean sort of our our goal as far as stuff that we want to be contributing mm -hmm. is is games that sort of spark your imagination in a way that 
that games sort of used to do that and maybe don't as much anymore. Um, and so that was sort of one of our one of our goals, part of our mission statement, I guess. Um, and so maybe you know, ideally, we're contributing something like that. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, one of the biggest other games you know I keep mentioning it is um, Journey. Yeah. Uh, do you think that it's more rare to find games these days that have an emotional reaction? I mean, Bastion at its core is a very big storyline-driven mm -hmm. um, action action-based uh, game. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is about the current? Sta uh, the current state of uh, the video game industry that we're just not making as many connections anymore? I mean, I think it has to do with the types of stories people are trying to tell. You know, if, if you're trying to tell a, a story that, you know, can have an emotional impact and, and you, you, a lot of your focus is on doing that, I think that, you know, that, like I know for us, that was a big focus. We wanted to tell an interesting story, a compelling story. We wanted to get people emotionally involved with the game. And um, if that's part of one of your goals as you're developing the game, I think it can happen, but I don't know that that's necessarily a goal for some, some developers, but, but, but I don't know, uh, obviously. I only have my <laughs> like tiny sliver of, of the industry that I look at. Gotcha. Um, I guess looking back and then, um, Talking about the future, what are some of the lessons that you learned from Bastion coming from the audio side um, that you're looking to apply to Transistor? Yeah, uh, a bunch of stuff. Because when I made Bastion, I'd actually never worked on a game before. So I, I did a lot of learning real quick, especially uh, on the sound effects and audio integration side of things. I really had like no idea what I was doing. Um, Can you give an example? Yes, I, I mean, so, so I'd never made, made any sort of sound effects before. Um, and so figuring out how to go about that, you know, how do I approach the soundscape for the game? Do I want to go for realism? Do I want to go for something more exaggerated and fantastical, you know? Um, and so I, I kind of struggled with that for a while. And then just the actual implementation, like how, how you put audio in a game, I'd never really had any knowledge of that before so learning how to use the audio integration tools we were working with exact on bastion which was a microsoft thing um learning how to use that was you know sort of a, it was a big learning curve right at the beginning i did a lot of experimentation just trying to get my brain around how all that stuff worked um so specifically that the music stuff was more comfortable for me just because you know that's more my background um but i still learned you know um, sort of a lot about what kinds of pieces I felt worked well and what kinds of pieces worked less well and the things about them, you know, that worked, et cetera. So, so I'm hoping to, you know, apply all this knowledge. I mean, al already the stuff we're working on in Transistor, we're doing like the audio s implementation side of things is much more sophisticated. We're using a different program um, and we're really trying to do some more reactive kind of immersive things with it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it will turn out that way. <laughs> All right. Um, now I'm trying to think about the audio specifically in Bastion, and it has, you know, it's. I hate. I, I hesitate to use the word steampunk, but it mm -hmm. has similar elements to that. You know, it's very mm -hmm. kind of raw. It's, it's, it's earthy in a different sense. And then Transistor kind of takes on a different theme, where it's more like sci-fi and mm -hmm. a little more streamlined. Um, what kind of mindset, like, do you think of more? I'm trying to figure out like a more visual interface of like, you know, when I was working on Bastion, I thought of this and then Transistor, I thought of, I'm thinking of this. Yeah. Uh, geez, you know, a lot of it for me is about the feel when I'm working on something. And so, you know, I, I'm lucky enough to be able to be a part of the entire development process. I started on Bastion, like right at the very start and I'm the same with Transistor. Um, so I work with the team and you know, we all kind of bounce ideas off of each other about how we want the game to feel and what we want it to look like and sound like. And, and so it's really helpful to look at Jen's artwork, you know, and sort of see like, okay, this is sort of the visual style that we want to try and go for. How does that make me feel? You know, what, how do I want to express that feeling musically? Um, so, you know, for this game, we actually, for Transistor, we made what we, what we called like a tone piece where it was like a little, you know, minute and a half or two minute basically a video of just kind of stills that we pan over um, 
to get like a visual implication with some narration that we you know so that we wrote and then uh, that Logan did and then some a piece of music that I made that to try and really express like the feeling that I wanted to go for uh, musically and that everybody sort of you know to see how they came together and if it was going to work right right <laughs> basically and and so sort of that helped us you know we were struggling I would say for for a while on this game actually to really find a tone that we were all like you know confident in and and knew that it was going to work together um because we were using like bastion assets for a really long time in the development process and stuff so it was just like hard to get your brain out of that mode right um so yeah i mean i would say that tone piece is really the thing that i that i focus on and, and also sort of the the feeling that i get when i look at the artwork and stuff like that you know gotcha um i guess this is more of a a bigger overall question um as video game fans get older um their appreciation for nostalgia has also grown mm -hmm. um we talked a little bit previously before about um things like video games live video game orchestra mm -hmm. and even bands like Anamanaguchi who take you know the chiptune scene and kind of blow it up into like this different thing yeah. um where do you think the future of video games music is going i you know honestly i have no <laughs> idea i mean I think it's the. Uh, I I feel like the 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 lines between video game music and just sort of all the music is mm -hmm. they're they're sort of going away to some degree, um, so, you know I, I, I feel like there's a a palette like a pre-existing palette that people are you know have come to be used to in video games or expect so I feel like that stuff's still going to happen and the chip stuff is still going to be a part of that for you know for a while but. I, I just feel like the now there anything is an option basically because you know it's audio it's not MIDI anymore you know it's not it's uh, it's all audio so you can just you can do you can do anything with, with it um, as long as it is appropriate for the for the game and I think that's really something that's so cool about about doing what I do is you know I just get to make whatever right. <laughs> you know, make whatever's cool and mm -hmm. so yeah that's that's definitely uh, so to answer your question. I have no idea where it's going. <laughs> yeah. um, can you name a few people off the top of your head whose work um, you think is kind of quote unquote breaking boundaries in a sense? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Jim Guthrie. You know, his his work has been really cool to listen to. Um, I mean, I I've I was inspired personally by Jonathan Colton's some of the you know the stuff that he did for Portal and stuff like that. I thought that was a very cool um, use of a song, like when, when I played the first Portal game, you know, I was like, oh wow, that's a very cool use of a song in a game, you know, and, 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 uh, Laura Shigahara for Plants vs. Zombies, uh, and among a bunch of other things, I looked at that game a lot, actually, when I was working on Bastion, um, and they also have, like, a song sort of used in a similar way, and that, the, those two games are actually sort of what, what gave me the desire to really try and include songs in Bastion in a way that, um, wasn't necessarily more meaningful but just wasn't like 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 a you know a happy fun like jokey thing at the end which right. which i thought was awesome in, in those games you know of course but um we wanted to try and like you know so that anyway uh to name a few those those things have, have really uh recently inspired me that's pretty cool i think um the introduction of uh vocal tracks i mean for me personally with the exception of uh metal gear solid sneak eater <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the one that pops up in my head i was like that's kind of old yeah. yeah um yeah they're so they're so they're, uh, they've been doing it for 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 a while but yeah, yeah they're sort of like weird japanese pop songs that didn't like have a bunch to do with uh i mean they did sort of but they were sort of esoteric and weird yeah, yeah it was like yeah. a different it's a different vibe i think i th i totally agree with yeah. that um you know, I just, um, I know a lot of people have probably, myself included, have been um, kind of begging you guys to release the single for Transistor. And can you tell us a little bit about the creation behind We All uh, We All Become? Sure, yeah. Uh, I made it, basically, I wrote it, like, for the trailer. Um, so, you know, I've got a full-length version in, you know, that, that will, will <laughs> that's happening. Uh, but, yeah, so I, mean, I composed it for the trailer. I wanted something to to be exciting and to really sort of, um, you know, try and establish the tone of the game. A lot of the music in the game is a lot like more down tempo than, than this song, so I wanted something to like really sort of um, generate a lot of excitement for the trailer as well as just be, um, be expressive of the tone uh, of the game at the same time, which is, 
was was a hard task for right. a while, and then I, I I think I figured it out. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so that that uh, the response to that song has been pretty insane. I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe people want. So we're the plan is I think we're we're, we're going to try and wait till the game comes out to release any of the music from it. Just even though I know I know people, I got a lot of requests, but I think we don't want <laughs> we don't want to spoil anything. Right. Know? Right. Um. So. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about, you know, what you do outside of Supergiant. Also, by the way, that's Higgins. Yeah. I forgot to introduce him. Say hi here. You can, you can wave and say hi. He was snoring before a little bit. Um, you're also in a band called Control Group. Yes, I am. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how that's going? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. We're playing a bunch of gigs right now. Um, I'm playing with these guys, Jeremy Parker and Evan Reynolds. Uh, Jeremy used to work at Harmonix, actually. And uh, we met because we were... Uh, both making content for Rock Band for Rock Band Network, um, so we were both like authoring songs for that, um, and started rocking together for real. And uh, he brought in his friend Evan and and another friend who was no longer in the in the band. But um, but yeah, it's been really fun. We've been playing together for over a year, like a, like almost probably a couple years now. Mm-hmm. And finally decided, oh, well, we have a bunch of songs. Let's start playing shows. And uh, yeah, we're doing a little Boston area mini tour, and we're we're playing with the uh, you know on a bill with the VGO uh, at the Boston Festival of Indie Games, so that's really exciting. Well, that's cool. Um, can, what else do you do outside of uh, Supergiant that might be audio related? Because it seems like you know, given given the background, <laughs> you seem to be all about music. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean uh, that that fills up a lot of my time. Uh, believe it or not, I the band and the and the game stuff, um, audio related other stuff. I mean. I, still play rock band you know <laughs> frequently uh and uh you know th- those are most those are most of the audio audio things i'm doing these days those those three gotcha um and i guess the last but not least i thought these were fun questions um what video game soundtrack can you think of in your mind that just doesn't seem to get enough love you know we have a lot of people who like ugh, wax poetry and yeah. beyond about final fantasy all these other things I give you three. Is that okay? Yeah, I that's three? fine. Because <laughs> I, I can't pick. Uh, my favorite probably is Marble Madness for, okay. for the NES. Like specifically the NES one because the Sega one and the arcade one had like some weird synth that was like a weird FM synth. So mm-hmm. it was like fake strings and fake, you know what I mean? Instead of the, just the, you know, right. the wave sounds from the Nintendo. And yeah, it's, I love that soundtrack. That was the first, I played it when I was a little kid and that was the first game where I thought the music was awesome like really cool like I like Double Dragon and all that other stuff but but I thought wow this is crazy um another one is Dungeon Keeper actually the very first Dungeon Keeper game Mm -hmm. uh it's like super creepy and atmospheric in a really interesting way and very dark and weird um but totally made that game for me I mean it just made it like completed the tone and that game had a great tone like a really interesting um a great narrator and a great you know it was, I don't know if it was a narrator it was like a right a, yeah announcer. <laughs> I guess like I sort of an announcer more but um but yeah I, I love that game and then Fallout 2 specifically uh not Fallout I mean Fallout 1 was great and right. they, they reused a lot of the stuff in Fallout 2 but Fallout mm-hmm. 2 is the one that like I played a bunch um do you still play it I I I've played it as recently as like a year and a half ago, probably. Like I'll I'll pl- I'll bust out that game and play through it like once every couple of years still because I love it so much. Um, that's one of my favorites. So yeah, the soundtrack for that you know has made made a big impression on me as well. Awesome. Um, uh, what games are you currently playing? Um, well, I'm playing sort of like too much of the Magic game for the iPad. Okay. Like magic the Gathering. I'm playing too much of that. Uh, I, I just finished uh, Shadowrun, which is really cool. Right. Um, I'm sort of just finally getting to Fallout New Vegas, which I, I never played. Um, I just downloaded Beat Buddy, which I'm about to check out. It's just uh, German developers, and I've, I've been, like been talking to them about the game for a while. It's like a music. It's like a rhythm based. Like it's a sort of an action-y, adventure game that is all, everything's tied to the music, like all the scenery and everything. Oh, so, huh. it sounds um, kind of like Padapon almost. Cool, I'm not familiar. Padapon's also like a rhythm-based game where you kind of do it in tune, you like hit the hit the buttons to help these um, 
they're called the the patapon to mm-hmm. like beat an enemy so they like march their drums and Fun. like shoot arrows and that's stuff that's cool and this one you're like it's i think i don't know i haven't played it yet so i can't i can't really talk about it, <laughs> about it too much but uh but yeah you're like dude and you you know i don't know you float around we'll figure it out there's music stuff all right cool. so i'm gonna check out that um i think that's those are the i know i'm forgetting something <laughs> i i gotta go buy a ps3 so i can play dragon's crown though Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's. Oh. I have a lot of friends who are really into the game. Yeah, I hear it's. Yeah. I hear it's like real good. I mean, it's I. Supposed to be really good. I have like a soft spot for the old school like Golden Axe kind of brawlers, mm-hmm. so I like I gotta do it. <laughs> Alrighty, well, um, and just to backtrack, Transistor still coming out early 2014. That's the plan. Awesome. Cross your fingers and hope for yes, the Yes, I know. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Darren. Yeah, yeah, no problem. This is Pixelitis. Karen out.